Although I think what we're saying here might end up being broadcasted with a lag. So we should all smile. <laughs> and okay. great, we're actually live now. Okay, so um, hi everyone. Uh, you guys know me, but I'll introduce myself again to the YouTube community. I'm Molly Jane. I'm Club Market Cap's head of content. And today is our, the second day of our Christmas Bonanza YouTube or some really long name. Uh, we're going to be here every day right up until Christmas helping you guys figure out some of the big terms this year and maybe how to explain them to your friends and family, uh, what they all mean. And before we start um, with our talk today on play to earn games in Asia, I want to remind you that there's more to do than just watch us because you can go to coinmarketcap.com slash Christmas and you can become an ambassador, refer people, and you can win cash prizes. So in the first day, we already gained 10,000 new subscribers. We highly encourage you to follow along and subscribe. Um, all right, now that that's out of the way, we can get started. So we have three lovely panelists here. Um, maybe you guys can start at the top and work your way down, introduce yourself, and then and then we'll get started. Hi. So, uh, hi guys, uh, I'm Ken Wei. I'm a um, community manager of Aspo World. Um, it's, it's a way to be here today, uh, discussion between uh, Southeast Asia. So hopefully we can have a enlightening uh, 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 discussion today. Nice to have you. Cool. Yeah. Um, I can go next. Um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Min, and I've been in the Bay Area over 11 years before that I was in grad school um, doing PhD. I, I joined Google as a tech lead and then I left and I joined Harmony One as one of co-founders. Um, so this year, I, uh, because uh, last year because of COVID, I came back uh, to Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam was a uh, a uh, great country last year which was free of COVID. Um, so I started like advising a project called Warena. I'm also running a project called uh, Masspit, which is uh, an infrastructure for blockchain and web three apps. Great to be hey here. Guys. Uh, my name is Luis. I'm the country manager of uh, Yield Guild Games Philippines. Uh, Yield Guild is uh, one of the world's first uh, metaverse uh, DAOs. Um, we specialize with uh, play to earn games. We've been doing this for a little over a year now. Um, we've got a couple thousand scholars across the world. We're in uh, 24 countries. Um, the Philippines is our largest um, kind of base of, of users. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to talk about like what we do and, uh, and how we think this stuff is going to change the world. Okay, great. Glad to have you all here and have you all meet for the first time. You guys all do things that really seem to go together <laughs> in this space. So I'll start off with a question. Um, maybe you guys could talk about how you've seen the NFT and metaverse space change throughout 2021 and how that's affected what each of you guys do in the play to earn space. Is that too many buzzwords <laughs> in one sentence? But um, has it been in line with what you guys thought was gonna, was gonna happen? Um, I, I can start just because like um, we've, we've been kind of witnessing a pretty crazy um, evolution over this last year. Uh, the Philippines is kind of known to be the hub for play to earn, mostly because we've got the single largest chunk of play to earn gamers in the world. Um, usually when you talk about play to earn, you really refer to Axie Infinity players because that's, that's kind of like the flagship game for the play to earn concept. And about half of the world's play to earn gamers or Axie Infinity gamers live here in the Philippines. So um, you kind of got a pretty big chunk of the population over here. Um, so that's a little over, over 1.2 million uh, people uh, here in the Philippines that are playing Axie Infinity on any given day. Um, the way that it's evolved for us is that, um, you know, people are starting to take it very, very seriously. And that's everyone from your parents to the average government regulator, to the tax man, to uh, other startup founders who are creating businesses around these things. Um, you know, building stuff that are not necessarily anything to do with play to earn itself, but building kind of uh, supporting businesses around it. You know, like how do they manage their finances? How do they 
um, keep themselves safe online? Um, how do they you know, further their education? There are now these kind of small um, kind of uh, startup concepts uh, coming up just to kind of support this growing population because a lot of people believe that it is going to be the next big wave. Um, and it's very exciting to watch it. It's, um, you know, kind of, uh, to me, to me, it's a big deal because, you know, uh, being a 100% Filipino uh, founder, I, it's very rare for me to be able to say that the Philippines is on the forefront of anything. Um, and because it kind of is right now, it's, it's an interesting kind of thing to witness. Um, and yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah. So yeah, I, I do think I can uh, ask something to that. Um, um, I, I, I don't think NFT games have been around uh, for a while, even for, for several years, but um, not until the success of As Infinity probably in June uh, when they released their side chain that Vietnamese people uh, started understanding more about uh, this kind of industry. And, um, you know, ever since I've seen a lot of uh, community emerging in uh, in Vietnam talking about NFT games and that, that there's been a huge number of uh, you know new games uh, NFT games uh, you know being built up at the moment we we we're having this panel um and and, and I do think uh, as infinity uh, ha has actually uh, laid the foundation uh, for for the v Vietnamese um, uh, you know sort of people to uh, for all the steps in building uh, more games in the future, uh, and uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, excited and uh, looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with uh, Luis and uh, um, and uh, thank I can. Uh, I want to ask uh, one more is um, I think last year and this year, like which was COVID and the pandemic, but is boost the the crypto adoption a little bit a little bit to the mainstream and nft is i think the best way for crypto to go to mainstream why um because it's a lot easier to explain nft or a like play to uh, to the end user i think that's the, the the best way and um i think um the play to earn um it give us the new kind of like um you know design or like build a game. Um, so in the past, before the play to an NFT, uh, because of the regulation, it's much restricted for the game studio to tokenize and to make revenues. For a game studio, um, it's difficult for them to transfer or sell the items in the games. And and the items, the game items could be gone if the game studio won't continue. Uh, upgrade the game version. But now with the NFT, um, the game studio, they can have freedom to tokenize using the blockchain technology. And, you know, they can access more user uh, on over the world, not just their locals. Um, for the, the game players, you know, they, you know, they can easier to access and buy and sell and then convert to fiat, whatever they want. So I think I'm really excited for the gaming industry um, and I think it's just the beginning of new era for, for the gaming industry. So do you think that the majority of the new projects, uh, the reason they're doing so well is because of the community? Are these really all community-based or are they sort of the centralized idea of there's a gaming studio that makes this product that goes out? Which way do you think it's going? I think that the, the concept is always that it's community-driven. Um, but, you know, when you're starting something out, you got to have something that's kind of bootstrapping the, the effort, right? You can't just start from, you can't start with a community built in that, that, that has to be grown around, around a product or a concept. Uh, and I think what will uh, kind of happen naturally is that communities will start to form a lot faster around these things because people are starting to get so used to the idea that when you have this interesting new project, that Discord server will just fill up instantly, right? And then now you've got a community, now you can kind of start, you know, um, uh, working together towards a shared goal. Um, but that, that, that back, in, back in the day, that would kind of, that, ha that happened over weeks and months because, you know, it would take time for, for that kind of organic growth to happen. But uh, these days it's a lot faster because people are getting uh, very used to it. 
that being said, that's not a mainstream characteristic. Like the average person is not going to join a hundred different Discord servers. Um, that's not really kind of, we're not there yet. We're not there. Um, eventually, maybe, but you got to be pretty committed to, you know, finding that next big, um, the next Axie Infinity game. Um, you have to be pretty committed to that idea if you are going to join that many different projects uh, all at the same time. It's, it's, it's quite challenging to get things straight in your head once you've got that many Discord servers running. I can understand that with my Telegram mm -hmm. channels. Uh, can be a little overwhelming. What do you guys, other guys think? Uh, I, I totally agree with uh, you. It's, it's actually a uh, community driven motivation to produce these games. Um, but 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 uh, having uh, talked to some of my friends, I, I do think um, a, a lot of the games and now on the market um, they have sort of a substandard graphics. So uh, a lot of uh, even traditional game producers are jumping in the industry to make sure they can provide users, you know, with uh, the better mechanism economic opportunities as well as the the entertainment and the fun that they um can get uh, like um they, they have been having uh you know from traditional games that's my view on that you can go yeah. in if you want otherwise um, i have another sorry yeah, in, in my opinion, it's, it's um, it come from the, the dream of decentralization. Um, because uh, when we talk about the crypto, we talk about the decentralization, and we we wanna we don't want the network belong to a single entity. Um, and um, the same thing with the uh, the game, the play to earn, or any project. People prefer uh, the project. Uh, belong to the community, not belong to the single uh, entities. And I think um, in the beginning uh, to bootstrap that, it still need um, someone to to start, and it can you know um, it uh, it can have like many iteration and um, people. And right now, as you can see, like um, we, there's some like platform like Snapshot or something, and people can you know people the holders of the kind of project. They can vote for the ideas direction of the uh, of the projects, and so kind of like people prefer the project which belonging to the community rather than just a uh, single entities. Um, so it can so, so that like the project can build a trust. Uh, so this is they are they're not scammer. They are a truly uh, real projects. Yeah. So talking about how there's a lot of like you said, uh, there's just a lot of money kind of floating around all these projects and making sure people aren't scammers. And Luis said at the top that play to earn has definitely caught the attention of some regulators. I'm wondering if you think that in the future regulation and know your customer requirements are going to impact players' experiences, if it's going to make onboarding more people harder, or if you think that's actually the way that this should go in order to avoid any sort of terrible bit connect Mount Gox-like situation down the line? <laughs> uh, well, I don't think having more KYC is going to stop more BitConnects from happening. That's still going to happen because uh, if anything, uh, KYC lends a false legitimacy to, to, to projects. Um, I, I think that more likely uh, we're going to need to have uh, KYC because if people are earning a real income, um, they are going to be liable for some kind of taxation at some point. Um, and if it's them reporting it, then great, but that's voluntary. So, you know, I have a feeling the government is probably not going to be into that. Um, they are probably going to try to ask the platform providers to, you know, um, comply somehow. Uh, that hasn't happened yet. This is all theoretical. And thankfully, it hasn't happened yet. I think that we've still got a long way to go before they figure out exactly how to regulate this space. Um, you know, if you consider how how old Bitcoin was before the very first Bitcoin regulation was written, I mean, it was already five years old at that point, right? So, um, could be a while. It could be a while before we actually see real regulation kind of being written for this stuff. Um, but that being said. Uh, 
I, it seems more likely that you will have uh, regulation with play to earn just because, you know, kind of at the heart of it, it is basically just like online income, right? And that's no different from Fiverr or TaskRabbit or any of these other kind of income generating activities that we have online. Um, those are always, those have always been open to taxes. Um, so I feel like that's probably going to be an, an inevitability for, for play to earn as well. What do you guys yeah, think? Yeah. We need to have some, some opposition, you know, everyone's mm, just agreeing. Mm. I want to say, I think it's a terrible uh, idea. No regulation, no taxes. <laughs> um, like for, 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 for the case in, in Vietnam, uh, I, I do think payers in Vietnam um, are very uh, hesitant to jump in this field because of lack of regulation. Um, I, I do think regulation is necessary, especially for, for the Vietnamese market uh, to, you know, to uh, capture more users' uh, attraction. Uh, for the NFT games, uh, but I, I, I think it's gonna take years for for Vietnamese government to follow that, and um, it may be um, just when the you know all all other developed countries are uh, sort of uh, trapped up a uh, a set of laws for for this industry that uh, so the Vietnamese uh, government can can follow them. Yeah, from my opinion, um, so. If you, I think blockchain is freedom. Um, you know, like anyone can create a wallet. Anyone can have like a thousand of addresses. So by, you know, by the technical, like anyone can can play with crypto uh, with the wallet. But the the part like, like eventually, like as of now, like eventually you want to convert to fiat um, you know, to pay for your expenses or to pay your employees, um, that areas is, I think, um, it, it right now is happening right now. Like, like to to get a, a Binance Binance account, you have to get the, the KYC. You um, like ac accept like if you do the, like the OTC, like I, I don't know, but like in my opinion, like blockchain is the freedom. You can do whatever in, in blockchain, but like the the fiat and crypto uh, right now is required the KYC, and uh, I think eventually, uh, um, like when the crypto go to mainstream, um, the KYC is required for that part like from, from the fiat to crypto. Yeah. So this is something that came up when I in a talk yesterday about metaverses and, and Web three point where some of the people I was speaking to said that they used to think that the graphics of play to earn games were really important, but then they've sort of changed their mind and they think that the graphics will come later, the games come first. And I'm wondering if you guys have any opinion on that. If you, and, and as like a point B to my question, what is the thing that you hear from your users that they wish that you had, they wish they were able to do in, in a play to earn game that is not possible right now? Um, I think that based on, you know, very easy to prove evidence, the graphics are not that important. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that there's no argument that Axie Infinity is still very modest in, in its production quality. And, you know, that is a testament to how important tokenomics are, because the thing that actually made Axie Infinity so popular it's not really, it's graphics. I mean, they're fine, right? They're completely acceptable for what they are, but that is not the thing that people talk about when they talk about Axie Infinity. They talk about the fact that they can actually earn from it. And, you know, there's a reason why it's in places like the Philippines that this stuff is so big, um, places like, uh, you know, Latin America. It's because um, when you are able to earn two to $400 a month, from playing a thing, whatever that thing is, um, it, it's meaningful in those countries, in, in countries like the Philippines, in, in some countries in Southeast Asia, in some countries in, in South America. Um, so that's what's important. So I've never had any of our players complain to me that you know, they would have stuck around with Axie Infinity if only the graphics were better. Like no one has ever said that. 
Um, what, they, the, what they've always said is, I wish I could earn more from this. Is there any way I can optimize kind of what I'm doing with this? So we have a lot of these kind of mentoring programs where we teach them how to play the game better, how to become, uh, you know, eventually the goal for, for us actually is for them to, to graduate to something else. Maybe instead of being a, an Axi player, they could be a, a manager, a guild manager, right? So they could have their own players kind of in their, in their pool. Um, so basically we turn them into micro entrepreneurs. Um, I think that that's kind of a way more compelling reason for, for any of this stuff to exist. Because, you know, if you remove the fact that we're playing with these cute digital pets, what we're really teaching people is entrepreneurship. Uh, and I think that that's kind of powerful, especially in, again, in emerging markets where alternative, you know, alternative streams of income, especially during a, a pandemic and a lockdown, it's just really hard to come by, right? So uh, partially, one of the reasons why people were so experimental and, and willing to try something as weird as Axie Infinity was because they really had no other options at the time. They were stuck at home, right? And if you can make a couple hundred US a month from playing a game for two to three hours a day, that is, in the Philippines, that is a good deal. So yeah. I guess that's kind of the bottom line there. I, I really don't think the graphics matter so much, but it does seem like a lot of the new games that are coming out are really, really kind of doubling down on the production quality. And that makes sense because they don't have the tokenomics yet. So that's the reason why they're doing it. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with the ways uh, on that. I, I actually think uh, Acid Video has, has been doing a great job in allowing you know people or around the world to to earn their income, um, but 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 uh, that's sort of also the the pressure for you know for the the the, the uh, new emer newly emerging games right now. Um, they they cannot uh, you know follow that kind of tokenomics, so they they start focusing on you know the graphics. But 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 I don't think the game they you know the the um, something that um, can retain the players is the game they. First of all, and second, the um, you know the possibility uh, for 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 them to earn, and then you know the graphics. If you have good graphics, even amazing graphics, but people cannot uh, feel interested in playing your games and cannot earn from that, they're, they're gonna leave. So yeah, mm. that's what I think. Cool. Yeah, um, in my opinion, um, I think um, um, RC, uh, RC Infinity. Um, um, uh, it's the first game in innovating the play to earn, and it should come just from the play to earn. When basic, when we say play to earn, we mean like money. Um, so um, people started like they care about making money, uh, especially during the pandemic, um, like last year and this year, uh, when they um, they have no job. And uh, at first, yeah, um, it's come on about how to uh, want to make they want to make more money. Um, like if the projects has um, and then there's some other project like um, if you know like um, Cybercons is a general NFT collection but they have some DeFi like if you buy if you owe a Genesis uh, Cybercon you can um, you know owe some other banana tokens um, so it's on about the DeFi around uh, DeFi or like making money but um, what I'm worried is so right now the more like every day we see the more game um, joining to the market like so the, the the play to earn can get saturated over saturated I would say and with that like there's so many games so like 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 how um, so like as the user like which game I should play and then um, so when when the market get over saturated they really need the uh, the organic. Uh, the real user because like um, before NFT or before play to earn, there's still a lot of people playing the game without uh, thinking about uh, making money. They they play the game for fun. They play the game for their uh, to, to to they enjoy playing the game. Um, they willing to even pay uh, a lot of money like uh, fifty thousand uh, dollar or like a hundred thousand dollar to buy just a single item. To you know, 
to 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 make they feel like better, like they like a hero in a game or something. Um, so I think so when the market get oversaturated, um, so we the graphics uh, could matter later uh, because like uh, like like everyone can copy the same token matrix or the same the same way that accessibility design they well design they they really well design and they get improved over day over time by time but people can copy the idea like the, the right token metrics uh, but when a market gets uh, oversaturated i think the graphic or uh, or something that niche uh which uh let the people stick with the game is is matter later So we have about five minutes left. Maybe you guys could each go around and say one thing that you absolutely hope will happen in the play journey space in 2022. And maybe one thing that you wish, like, a, um, how to phrase this, like a pain point that happened already that you want to improve on. Those are the same question. One thing you want to happen in 2022. There we go. That's it, just one. <laughs> I'll, I'll do I'll do a really quick one. I think we we deserve uh, more competitors that are you know kind of closer to Axie Infinity in terms of size and and footprint. Um, and and I think that you know it it will take time to get there, but if it's going to happen, it's going to happen in 2022. There's so much investment. There's so much kind of money being poured into this space right now that um, you know all of the great design talent, you know, kind of the game designers, the, you know, the, 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 the economists, the people who are kind of thinking up this stuff, like all the best ones are now very well funded. Uh, so we're definitely going to see something else. I don't know what it might be. Um, although uh, uh, YGG, my, my company does spend a lot of time looking at every single one of these games and we've made a lot of investments. Um, I think about 40 investments um, in various promising new play to earn games. Um, yeah, we, we definitely should have at least one big one at some point, uh, one other big one other than Axie Infinity, because I think that's just healthier for the space overall. Yeah. Um, for, for me personally, um, I'm looking forward to see more um, sort of times that people join in the field, you know, to build up a, a a uh, brand new empire so we we can sort of hopefully overthrow you know the dominance of axe infinity uh as for what is it going to be one of them maybe each uh, each of us here is um going to be that um so yeah looking forward to see um some uh, new games with uh, you know way uh, tokenomics maybe uh beautiful graphics and amazing game day to retain their players Cool. Um, um, I am really excited for the gaming industry um, because um, with NFT, with PlayTurn, with the Metaverse stuff. Um, so um, this is a new tie-up by uh, um, the new new era uh, for the gaming industry. Uh, people can easier uh, to, you know, a, 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 like the game studio can uh, access more user on over the world and it's easier for them to make revenues and for the end user it's easier for them to you know transfer and and uh, sell their items or any tokens uh, but uh, I is um, I think uh, I is a one opinion in the, uh, the blockchain um, you know as I, I, I said before like I was a co-founder of harmony one a layer one um, and I am really care about the, the ad adoption for crypto in general. Um, and I think it's a really uh, challenge because right now, um, everyone, they, um, like most of people, they don't un understand about crypto or Bitcoin. I still remember like, like even, even I am a tech guy, tech savvy, um, 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 it's, it still took me a year to understand like Bitcoin, how, um, that, how the, the network talking to each other, like how, like it, it took me like a year to feel like comfortable using crypto, using a wallet to send money, um, like our tokens. And, you know, I think like the the challenge for, for the new people to really get uh, comfortable or uh, with, with crypto, like, like the, answer, the question is like how to get started, like uh, they can start with like the wallet, 
or I, and then when I start with wallets and I said which wallet they should use, uh, just wallets or something else, right? And then when they had a wallet, so they, uh, they don't have any cryptocurrency, like they had to buy, uh, it cost them money, like it's just like, it should make the whole crypto adoption like just difficult. And I'm really looking forward to like, to see the movement, the, the crypto adoption in general. Yeah, we all have some really positive outlooks. I hope all of these things happen. Um, as a final sign off, Luis, do you wanna give your bit about what's happening in the Philippines right now and how, how people can help? Sure, yeah. Um, so um, you probably heard that uh, the Philippines got hit by yet another typhoon. It happens every three or four years with us. Um, this one was particularly bad. Um, it hit kind of the middle part of our country um, about you know, 7,000 homes on just kind of one of the islands were kind of basically demolished uh, by this typhoon. This is Typhoon Odette. Um, so Yield Guild uh, Filipinas, which is my, my country team, uh, we've been spending the last few days raising money um, to, to help the victims of this typhoon. Um, if you want to um, pitch in, you just look for Yield Guild on Twitter, at Yield Guild. Hopefully you can read the way it's spelled. Mm. Um, and uh, so, we, you know, the community has been pretty amazing. We've raised something like $450,000 uh, already over the last four days. Uh, we've already started deploying those funds. Um, last night, I approved the purchase of uh, 66,000 cans of tuna. Uh, so <laughs> kind of uh, the, the kinds of things that we are doing is pretty crazy because uh, you know, the scale of this disaster is so large. Um, this is not the way I was expecting to end my year, but um, I'm just glad that the community has, you know, kind of just really come together for this. Um, you know, people from Axie Infinity, people from the metaverse, people from, you know, the crypto, crypto community at large. Uh, so many people have made contributions, big and small, and um, we're very, very lucky that um, you know that people are at least paying attention and uh, and want to support the cause. So that's it. Yeah, if um, if people are interested, um, just look for us on on Twitter. You'll see all of the details for how to donate there. Thanks so much. Great. So a sad but happy ending to the year. You know, because of the community support, you're seeing all of that, and then. Um, I'm sure all of you guys can be found on Twitter. We've, we've tweeted this. Please follow everyone here for more information about what's going on with Marina and uh, Aspo and Yield Guild Games. Obviously, continue to subscribe to CoinMarketCap. Um, and again, CoinMarketCap.com slash Christmas to become one of our referrers. And that's all. Thank you guys so much for coming on. And I hope you have a wonderful end of your year. Mm. Thanks, Thanks for having me today.